trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Let's go. Zen, trap, zen, trap, zen, trap, zen, trap. Protect your peace, protect your energy. Welcome back to the Zen Trap. Uh, I'm one of your two hosts, Yogi LG. And Zen P. And you are here for another ZTP, Zen Trap Perspective. ZTP. We got a book for you today. What we got, man? Man, we got a living legend. Living Been a legend. legend. Been a Always going to be a legend. Always going to be a legend. It's the big goo Gucci. Gucci Mane, 1017 Brick Squad. <laughs> I'm East excited. Atlanta, representing Zone, Zone 6. six. Come on, man. Come Stop on, playing. Now. Like I said. That's my hood. Living living legend. Um, we're reviewing the Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness with Seren Baker. All right. So this is Gucci's book right here. This is his second book, I think. This is his second book. His second his book. His first book is the autobiography of Gucci Mane. Number one, New York Times bestseller. Bestseller. That's crazy. As you can see, I'm excited. I'm excited. All um, right, start cool. us off, Yogi LG, and tell All me right. who would you recommend this video to? Not video book. I'm sorry. That's cool. Um, I ain't gonna lie. This is for your everyday hood nigga, for sure. Like, Okay, break that down. <laughs> I'm going to break this all down. Uh, kind of what I saw like, or what I felt reading the book is just Gucci is just trying to put concepts that you get from all these other places, all these prolific type books, um, all these self-help joints, and putting them in layman's terms and saying, like, keep grinding, keep hustling, stay focused. He's just using these same terms in very uh, layman's terms. And, and it sounds like... It's literally words from Gucci. Like, he was just sitting in a room with, like, them and, like, look, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to get into. This You can't quit. This is why you got to keep going. What about you? Uh, who would you recommend it to? Interesting. I would recommend this book to, I mean, the same self-help crowd. Um, that's interesting because I know when you first started reading, you was like, it's kind of boring, right? Just because yeah. – did you think it was boring just because of the book, other books you've read? Or no, like, I didn't was think it, it was boring. I just thought it was, like – Maybe it just didn't apply to me as much. Interesting. So we had very different takes on this, but let me finish who I would recommend this to. I would recommend this to people who are looking to begin their change. Like, if you're looking to begin your self-help journey, I think this is a perfect book to start with. Like like Yogi LG said, it's plenty of layman terms in here. I'm ready to break this thing down because I, I can see. show you how it relates to other books. But this was a, a solid read to me. Solid. I, I think when I first started reading, and especially after you had said, like, you know, it was, it was slow in the beginning or something, I was going into it thinking that, and then, like, when I was starting to read it and stuff, I just kind of saw how it related to all these different things, and I was yeah, just like, absolutely. it's a solid book. A uh, uh, lot of big words in here, too, so I didn't, I didn't think this was written, like, strictly. I ain't never heard Gucci Mane talk like this. I ain't saying he can't, but I just said, I ain't never heard some of these words. I learned what solace meant today. <laughs> Interesting. That's cool. That's good. All right. That's really interesting. Cool. It is, ain't it? <laughs> How would you describe this uh, video or book to a person who's never read it? I would describe this as, hey, man, it's almost like we were talking about principles. This book gives you principles that you can use and apply to methods in your life. He talks about the principles that apply to him. Um the principles that he used when he got out of jail to change his life and have people thinking he a clone because of how good he changed his life. The principles he he's using to keep his like healthy lifestyle, his mindset, mindset sharp. It's just full of principles that you can choose to apply or choose to not. You can pick up some. You cannot pick up some. What about you? Um, I, I would almost say it's like a. It's a guide for I would even say like people who grind, people who hustle. Um, people who are on the day to day that like, again, kind of want to change where you at and what you're doing and you're doing the same thing every day. Um, really not motivated to do a whole lot. Gucci kind of goes into like, this is why you, this is how you can change how you think about it. Um, this is how, this is what you should be doing. So it, it's a guide for hustlers to me. That's how I would describe it. Okay. Okay. Let's get to my favorite part. Give me some of your favorite bars. All right, cool. I got to crack open the book on this one. Okay. Definitely got to crack open the book. Um, it's my first one. Sure. 
All right, so I thought this was really cool. In, in one of the little sections, it's called Be Resilient. He talks about self-talk. He was like, self, self-talk self helps keep me productive, and I'm hyped, right? So he goes into this whole bunch of stuff on self-talk, but what really um, got me in this little chapter is about uh, it takes so much discipline to be resilient. Being persistent and being resilient, it's about doing the shit once you fall down, once the haters are laughing at your mistakes, resilience is about bending instead of breaking. You need to keep your focus and follow your passion, even when nobody's around. So that little bar about bending instead of breaking was probably my favorite of the whole book. Oh, nice. Yeah, for I mean, sure. I got plenty of bars galore right, over go ahead. here. Yeah, I got, I got some in here. For um, sure. Just to build off of that, when you said um, you got to break yourself down to build yourself up. Sure. Heard uh, people forget they can learn from anything and everyone. It's lessons abound. Um, when somebody makes a mistake, you can learn from that. Um, you can look at someone and see the right moves to make and the wrong moves to make. That was one of my bars. Um, I got a, another one. I'm not a slave to nothing. If I don't like my job, I can get another one or quit. If I'm smart enough, I'm going to keep this until I've got something else going. But either way, you can change the narrative. I like that one. I ain't yeah. a slave to nothing. Yeah, you in control of it. For sure. Um, another one that was really good to me, I apply my self-awareness to the realities of other people's situation. I understand mm-hmm. when people say they're ready to throw in the towel when they feel like they're up to the limit. But I, I just really like that that bar about like, um, people do things that are disrespectful. We all know it. It's all happened to us a bunch of times. Um, young folks handle stuff um, um, like with issues and sometimes because they could be like high, immature, irresponsible. Knowing that I grade people on a curve. A lot of people don't understand that approach. So again, mm-hmm. just following up with the bar, I apply my self-awareness to the realities of other people's situations. So applying your self your self awareness to almost categorize people just where they are right now, and again, it's not holding nothing on people or trying to. It's a form of judge, judgment, but you're not trying to hold nothing on them. You're just trying to realize how you can communicate with them better. Is how I see it. Yeah, I mean, you're taking in their. I think I do that often. So we talk about like creating like a safe space, um, and I think the biggest thing I do when I do that is taking other people's reality and assess kind of what life they live in and how how they move it. And then before I approach them, I understand that before moving forward. So I definitely agree with that one. That's a bar. Um, so he was talking about uh, just going to prison and all the stuff that he got into. I thought this was pretty cool. He said, I came to peace with the realities of my situation. I decided I was going to do everything in my power to do better with the things in my control and we talk about that all the time like it's it only change you can only change what's in your control nothing else and so he came to peace with the reality this is what it is how can i change whatever's in my control moving forward not dwelling on that so that was of course things we've said over and over again are just reoccurring um even in this book right here well said. Well said, Gucci. <laughs> well, well said, Gucci. Go up. Um, Go up. Another, and look, man, on this sheet of paper, I got like literally topics that I could point to. Like yeah. uh, in this book, talks about the power now, controlling what you control, priorities, how to refocus, how to get a skill set, how to balance fun and work, yeah. um, resilience, routine, and self discipline. But one thing that we talked about a while ago that was up for debate and we got into semantics so we can bring it up again if you want just from this quote was talking about the potential of people people being capable and stuff so in this um chapter of haters are going to say you a clone so it says uh let's see people look at the positive change with my life my mind and my body and they say i can't do what he's doing so what can i do to discredit it they say those types of things because it's too hard to say i can't do it you feel that way because it's hard and you want to, you don't want to say or to admit to yourself that you don't want to put in the effort to make the changes necessary to change your life sure everybody wants to be healthy everybody wants to look their best everybody knows there are a couple of things you got to refrain from and a couple of things you got to do that aren't going to be enjoyable it's straight like that suffering is a part of it Absolutely. Bars from Big Guap. Now tell me how you feel like that relates to uh, potential. 
what I, I think it directly relates. It talks about everybody being capable, but people, uh, people trying to put you on a, a platter, like Lisa Nichols says, and make you great so that you can get off the hook. Mm. Make you extraordinary. That's what I got from that. What, what, mm. what do you feel you got from it? Maybe read it one more time. All right. Everybody wants to be healthy. Everybody wants to look their best. Everybody knows there's a couple of things you got to refrain from and a couple of things you got to do that aren't going to be enjoyable. It's straight like that. Suffering is a part of that, part of it. So if they don't want to deal with that, if they don't want to hold themselves accountable, they got to discredit someone who has done it. That's the mindset of people who don't want to take it upon themselves to create the change they want to see. I mean, there's plenty of other stuff, but again, it's saying like, yeah, everybody's capable, but then you start just being like, well, Pointing out the things that make this person so different and great for them to be able to do it to almost discredit yourself. Yeah, I think you absolutely discredit people when you don't want to do it. But I don't know if that that says everybody is capable. I think I feel like that says everybody wants it. But I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, that's a good bar. I agree. <laughs> you gonna you definitely gonna hate. That's, a, that's and a I'm not no saying hate. I. So I I want to speak to the the duality of like this book too. I don't agree with everything in this book. I don't like, I think it gets into semantics when you just talk about like the word choice of the, the root lesson that you're trying to get from it. Cause uh, again, I don't think that just because you're not trying to change your life, that that means you're a hater. I don't think that at all. And I, I think you can apply that from what this is saying, but there are people who hate and use that to discredit people. So again, it's like semantics. So I'm not taking away that, there are people who are complacent with how they are, how they look, but that's again saying that you you are comfortable with how you look. You you're not trying to change it because you don't want to change it. It's just saying that if you did want to change it, you are capable of changing it. It's how I interpreted it. I got you. I thought it was cool. He he references a lot of different like sports figures and uh I think he referenced like Kobe mentality, Tiger Woods and all that stuff. I think uh he definitely, you could tell he, like, pulled from people in his life that were influential to him and kind of, like, hopped on this train of, like, let me get my life right. So I think that's super cool as well. Uh, any of these topics sound good to you? If you can read that chicken scratch. I'm in the kitchen cooking. All right, let's go. There's some something on the back, too, now. Oh, like, oh. You, can, you can pick one and we can we can break it down. I'm, I'm she say, has no clue about what this means either. Like I've I've yeah. written these notes, so she has no clue. Selective ignorance and uh, grateful manifest. Okay, let's give selective me selective ignorance, ignorance page. Ignorance is either page ninety three or page ninety six. Okay, it's probably both. So what I did writing that stuff is just relating it to other stuff that we've learned. So we learned okay. selective ignorance in what four hour work week. Mm-hmm. All right, so ninety three. It worked out in my favor, and I told my wife, I'm not even going to tell people I'm off probation. I'm just going to keep on the act, acting like I was because it was like a defense. People were like, I know he's on probation, and he's got that thing on his ankle. I don't want to see him get messed up. I'm not going to be here around him. I just rolled that out, that whole routine I had. I just never stopped. Again, using selective ignorance. So if I go to page 96, hey, man, I expect a lot of you. You're demanding the best out of yourself. You are your best asset. And when you get rid of people around you who might disrupt that, you stop being naive. You become more aware. A lazy and miserable mindset leads to a lazy and miserable life. So avoid lazy and miserable people. And that speaks more to Debbie Downers. I'm sorry. I was yeah, on page that, that's 95. My, that's my favorite uh, section. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, sure. 96 comes from your favorite section, too, about selective ignorance. Um, you choose to be naive about what you want to be naive about. It's almost as if you were being a parent. Have you ever been in the supermarket or airport and seen an unruly spoiled child? The kid is just acting entitled. You witness that and you're like, damn, you know immediately they ain't acting right. But it'd be different if it was your child or your nephew or your little brother. It would be a whole different dynamic. You might not be as aware because it's family. It's not a big deal. But it's a big deal to the bystander because some behaviors are clearly out of line. But we choose to be naive about what we want to be naive about. Selective ignorance, Selective man. Selective ignorance, that's true. Um, and then the grateful one. Manifest is 139. 139. Grateful manifest. I don't even know this what that means right now. This is absolutely chicken scratch. I have. Oh, yeah, that's Dr. Henry. Straight <laughs> like that. Uh, do more, get more. This is stuff you be talking about. Um, this is being grateful about what you have. If you don't appreciate what you have, you're not going to get more. I really believe that. If you don't appreciate the car you've got, you don't keep it clean, why you get a new car? I've been like this since I was a child. Um, 
It's just saying I would go from Regal to Chevy, from Chevy to Cadillac, from Cadillac to Lexus, Lexus to Benz. A lot of people wouldn't do that. Some people just crash their car and not have any insurance and just walk away. So now it's a total loss. Do more, get more. Um, just because you don't want something anymore or because you don't value it doesn't mean that it doesn't have value or that someone else doesn't want it. Just about everything has value. Bars yeah. in this book, I mean, man. it's bars in a book. I ain't gonna lie. It's absolutely bars in a book. I'm gonna tell you what. Uh, to me, I expected the guide part to be a little bit more straightforward. Can I have my chicken scratch back? Oh, yeah. Just, um, but I think... The concepts in there are great. What do you mean by more straightforward then, I guess? I just, I felt like it it could have been like a plan, right? Like a, <clears throat> this book almost could have been an action plan. So I feel like a lot of stuff wasn't in like a. You wanted something more like very straight, specific, like do this and this will happen. Uh, Not as straightforward as that, but yes. More like, to me, this is like not necessarily a guide, but just like random topics that he feels like hey i want to tell you about this because this is gonna come up but i didn't see like a order or a kind of like a almost like you know how like in a think like a monk it was like sections like lead grow whatever mm -hmm. i think it it kind of like gave you some structure i didn't feel like there was a lot of structure that's the word i'm looking for i wanted to see more structure out of it I agree with that. I don't think it had structure, but I think the sections were structured. Like it was. Oh, the se each section was on topic for sure. But what do you mean by? That's what I mean. What you oh, just yeah. said. Okay, so each sections were on topic. It just didn't. It didn't flow to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it flowed, but I don't think that's what he was going for. I think he was going for literally listing out the principles. Yeah, yeah. That he he live on and stand for on. Sure. All right. So, uh, what was your favorite chapter or section? Oh, break yours down. I know you had just said it. We yeah. had just talked about it. So, so uh, it was like avoid lazy and miserable people. Let me see if I can. Uh, I almost wanted to like uh, read a whole section of this, but I can't. Uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, all that, but I was. I read a little insert. Living by the guideline changed my life. I didn't realize it, but I used to have a lot of people like. A lot of people like that in my life. They were miserable and they didn't want, they didn't always have my best interests in mind. When I noticed that, I noticed that we had different goals. I also noticed that we were distracting, they were distracting me and sidetracking me. I had been blind to that. So I made the change. I made my circle right and I have done my best to do it that way from now on. I think that's a huge part of like, and that to me related to uh, negativity and Speaking of think like a monk, right? About talking about like the people around you and how much negative energy they're giving you and realizing that's truly impacting you in a way. So sometimes that's some of the hardest thing to do is remove people out of your life who are negative that's always been there because you're just used to it. So him talking about removing those people is pretty good to me. Uh, funny. I I picked a chapter instead of a section. So that's the a section in the chapter that I really love. So that chapter is called Part Four: Your People. Um, just some of the names of the section. Lindsay, Yogi LG just talked about avoiding lazy and miserable people. Choose your friends carefully. Haters are going to say you were cloned. Uh, women are brilliant. So if I pick a random section from there. Oh, I can talk about me having women friends. Page 103. <laughs> uh, let's see. 103. I have a lot of female friends. Um, it's very, I would say, abnormal. But uh, I got some male friends, too. It's just. The scale is highly tipped towards women. Women are brilliant. Pay attention to women. They are brilliant. Women women have changed my life again and again because pretty much women give great advice. All this is pretty much saying is that women give, like, the best advice. And that's mainly why I have so many women friends. Like, they just tell it to you like it is. They still they still hold, hold you down, have your back, loyal and stuff. But they tell you when you're wrong and they hold you accountable. Now, if we talk about women and accountability for themselves, that's Yikes. a whole different yikes topic but i'm still a feminist gotta, you ain't gotta do that though all right you have a story in your life that relates story in my life that relates oh plenty 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 so if i go let's see page 107 in this gucci main guide to greatness uh it's not more of a story it's more so oh i love this so 
page 107, it says, and this book is full of pictures. So, like, this book is probably half the size of it in words just because <laughs> yeah, sure. it's so many pictures. And Gucci Mane talks about why he put pictures in there just so that you can see the progression and stuff. And, you know, he probably just want to stunt. You know how Gucci be? Yeah, because he used to look like this. Now he don't. <laughs> All right. In this social media world, we think we see a person. But that's just pictures, just videos. We are not with them. They showing us what they want us to see. It's just a part of who they are. Yeah, you know they from Texas, but this person knows them a lot better than you do. You're like, I didn't know you were adopted. Damn, I thought that was your real mama. Now we learning more. If we pay attention, we learn more about people all the time. We all change and we have to respect that about ourselves and each other. When we listen to people, learn their story and understand where they are now, we can better respect their transformation and their process. Another way to look at it is to not try and act like you know everyone. So I wanted to read that to build into my story of a game that me and my friends, specifically Yogi LG and some of my super close friends play all the time is, tell me something I don't know about you. <laughs> I've known Yogi LG for 10 years plus and mm. I still find something new out every time we do this. And don't get me wrong, it's semi-challenging when it randomly happens to just be like, tell me something. But when you think about it, it can literally be anything. It could be something super trivial, like, oh, man, I really like Cracker Jacks. Oh, that's nasty. Like, that's just nasty. Something, yeah, something random. Like, I don't like Cracker Jacks. I was just thinking of something random. Or it could be something from your childhood. It could be something from yeah. anytime. And you just really learn that, like, wow, it's so much that I, I don't know. But, like, um, we had Bunny on. I remember one time when me and Bunny had a real close conversation, and we, we had known each other at that point, 14 years, eight years, and she's telling me stuff about her family that I didn't know, mm. her upbringing, like all of this. Literally, when you sit down and give somebody your attention and actually ask genuine questions and genuinely listen, like I, I, you can learn so much. So, And I learned that from the Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. What about you? You got a story, Yogi LG? All right, if I had to pick a story that relates to my life, um, I'd probably see, see something that came from the section work in silence. Um, so he bas basically says silence is a vote of confidence in yourself. You need to do the work because it needs to be done, not because you want to be seen doing it. Let your work speak for itself. And a lot of times um, I struggle with that um, where I feel like, you know, I want to work in silence, but I feel like people don't think I'm going to do stuff. So I feel like, oh, I got to show somebody. I got to put it on Instagram. And a lot of people feel that way. So I think uh, that really gave me the uh, reassurance to, hey, real G's move in silence. Like lasagna. <laughs> Shout out to Wheezy. You know what I'm saying? So Wheezy. That, that gives me uh, motivation to keep doing that. For sure. Big facts. Yep. All right, what's your biggest takeaway? What you going to take away from this book and plot to your life right now? You ain't got nothing from the Gucci Mane guy. Nah, I got plenty. <laughs> you don't got Yikes. Uh, Gucci Mane got the greatness. I'm going to be honest. What I really take from it is if Gucci can change his life, I can change my life. And that ain't no diss to Gucci or anybody else, but more so to me saying, like, you, you can do it. Right. If you you have all the concepts, you have all the principles, all the ideas, all the you know, you know how to do what you got to do just to continue to walk on the path. Right. Continue to be consistent, continue to be resilient, uh, continue to persevere. So that's probably my biggest takeaway for sure. Okay. What about yourself? What's your biggest takeaway? All right. Um, let's see. Something I could take away is the, ch the section on learning to couple compartmentalize Ooh, i need to stop doing that why you say that compartmentalize because i over compartmentalize um can you expand a little bit yeah i think um i put everything in a separate box i think we've talked about this yeah we have but um i put things in a, in a separate box like communication is in this box and love life is in this box and friends are in this box and work is in this box and a lot of times there's some overlap, but I don't overlap them. I like to keep them very separate. Um, and so sometimes uh, 
learn like I guess learning a lesson or changing something about yourself that applies to all of those sections is more difficult to do because it's all in different compartments so sometimes if you merge them a little bit have some overlap you can kind of like change something in who you are and it'll apply to all sections versus going to all sections and change how you do all different sections thank you for sharing that that was beautiful you're welcome well said I learned something from that um, for me, it's a little bit different. I think I'm the opposite of that. I try to make everything cumulative. So I think what can help me focus more and giving like effort and, and accomplishing things is compartmentalizing to um, to focus on a task at hand. So like when Gucci writes stuff like um, you can't let life totally dictate what happens. Um, talking about how he like mentally gets focused for stuff like it's stuff going on, good, bad, and indifferent. You still got to get stuff done. So compartmentalizing sometimes just to focus so that you can get stuff done and not letting life get to you. And then the other thing that I was trying to take away is um, setting a standard for yourself. Like a bar from here that I really liked is remember what I think is average, you might think it's superb. Things that I used to think are superb, now I think they're average. That growth came from me keeping my principles in front of my mind. I do it now. I make today count. I keep improving. Don't be lazy. Everybody must be held accountable. And again, like semantics, some words, I, I word choice I, I don't necessarily agree with, but I get the message and the principle um, about like, you know, chasing your goals now. He talks a lot about doing stuff now, now and, sure. and pretty much the effort behind it. Um, being lazy versus self-care and stuff. Um, it's just a lot of good, simplified, layman terms, like Yogi LG said, principles that you can apply to your life to try. But if I lo- what I liked and learned from this book, because that's what I meant to say, when you when you kind of gave me a hint, like after you read like the first couple of stuff that, you know, the structure or whatever it was that you, you were saying mm-hmm. that like didn't really hit for you. I was feeling the same way at first where I was like, man, this book, it's got all the principles. The structure is a little random in how it's flowing. Mm-hmm. But he literally kind of talks about, like, he, he ain't writing. He ain't doing it for that stuff. Yeah. He's literally, like, talking about he's using quantity over quality for stuff, where he talks about how many albums he puts out. Don't get me wrong. He's trying to do better and get better each time. He's challenging himself on that. But he's just moving on like next shot mentality he compared a lot of stuff to basketball so yep. yeah this person like kendrick lamar and these people may put out one work in five years and it's yeah. gonna be Jay-Z great for five years yeah. but i'm blood in the street so they may make that 10 15 20 100 million off of that one album but i'm gonna make the same honey or even more just on five by albums blood in the street five fifty for sure i'm doing five a year i'm yeah. doing he's so he even talked about this book. Yeah, this is my second book. I'm, I'm going to keep writing books. books. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. keep. <laughs> so sure. I was like, and then he even wrote in here, and he'd be very straightforward very. sometimes. Like, hey, man, this book ain't for you. It's like, for me. At first. I'm going to keep using it so over and over. The other weird thing is like that I that I took, in, it's not weird, it's perspective. I took this book as being written. I You thought it was written like a little bit down a little bit. I thought it was written more up. Cause like I said, it was a lot of like uh, what I deem as big words and stuff. Who do you think his target target audience was? Oh, he, he said it. His target audience is people that's trying to actually change. Like it's not for people that like. Give me their demographics. What do you mean? When they set out, you the want right... me to say niggas for some reason? Like I feel no. like that's what you're trying to get out of me. I just want to know whatever people you're talking about. Give me their age and race and. I don't have an age and race. Okay, cool. If anybody looking to try and focus on, if you already know you're trying to change, like he's saying, these are the people I'm trying to talk to. The people that's not trying to change, you're not going to be able to hear or receive what's happening in this book anyway. So I don't think you have to put a number on it. You could be 15. You could be 55. You could be black. You could be white. You could be Asian. Like, I don't have a demographic. It's more so a personality type. Okay, cool. Um... You got any last words on this or anything you felt like? No, I I would (laughs) would honestly recommend you read the book. I'm not going to recommend you don't read the book. Absolutely read it. Um, Again, very good principles, very good concepts, um, very clear on what he's saying. 
all of it makes sense. All of it is similar to other self-help books um, as far as what you need to do and what you need to stay focused on and how you need to look into into yourself. So um, definitely give it give it a read for sure. Hey, man, I fool with this book, man. I I, I think the way Yogi LG saying it, it's like, if you in high school, this is a good book for you to get. <laughs> I fool with this book. If you want to give Gucci some uh, feedback, positive feedback, or just constructive feedback on the book, I think the next one in your guide to greatness can be like what she's saying, real applicable steps you can take. Like, this is step one, so it's changing your life. Focus on this. You literally can rewrite this book. And make have another bestseller. Absolutely. How would it go? How would it go, Yogi? Uh, the book would definitely go like. Give me the breakdown. How would you? Um, how would you want it to flow? I would almost want it to flow like, all right, the rise of like him as a person. You know what's funny? Whole time that might be in his autobiography, and you ain't even read it. You're right. It might be. <laughs> but go ahead, please keep going. I'm Probably sorry. like the rise, the fall, and then like the comeback. That's how I wanted to see like. Things he was doing that maybe he wasn't even doing right, but it was helping him get to the, wherever he was. Or maybe it's the things he was doing right in the beginning. And then, like, the fall kind of humbled him. He talked about being humble. Um, and then you got to, like, really be resilient. You locked up every day. which That's going to show you what you really made of, right? So that time period and then even the comeback after I got out, kind of some of the principles I adopted. And these are the steps I took. That's kind of how I would like to see You just want to see more steps. I want to see more structure. What does structure sound like, though? Like, just in the flow? Yes. Like, you wanted to go literally almost in chronological. Not, not necessarily chronological to his life, but chronological to, like, application. Like, I can't, if I don't have confidence in myself, we can't even talk about the stuff at the end. Like, So, I get it. So, you want the chronological steps of you need to begin with this principle is what I would recommend starting with. If once you start with confidence in yourself, you can build on this and you want applicable stories that apply to each one of those principles yeah. to make it he flow. He can honestly take, again, these same little sections and just reorganize them and maybe title them something different and it would flow way better, for sure, yeah. in my opinion. Nice. Um, what I'm going to end it with is that I thought was funny. I don't do things for fun is what his daddy taught him. <laughs> yeah. Uh a lot of this book was funny. Like, if you know Gucci and you're reading it, it's hilarious. All right. Uh, <laughs> Let's play cards for fun, I said to him one time, because I had lost my money to him. He showed me how to play for a dime, maybe a dollar. He taught me for like a month. Then it was over. Give me my money back. Now, this was around the same time he said, you quit when you win. I was like, why'd you quit on me? He was like, if I don't quit when I win, when am I going to quit? <laughs> so he was really giving me a lot of games. So I said, Dad, let's just play for fun. I know how to play now. He said, I don't do things for fun. We need to gamble and not do it. Because the last time I did something for fun, I had a son. <laughs> hey, now that's a bar. <laughs> he said, I was just a little boy from Alabama sitting with my dad. That was like some instructions then. It went over my head. I was like, you had fun with my mama? I was like, what in the world? Even though that's my dad. You don't say that to me, dog. Now I look at what he's saying. It's ruthless. He was like, I don't really play. I just gave you your money back. The game's over. I'm through playing. Go play. I was like, damn. Well, damn. <laughs> he say I was like, damn, like a hundred times in his book. He talked about solace a lot, too. Oh, it was another funny what, thing. What's your definition of solace? What did you learn? Oh, shoot. Come on, it's, now. It's uh, showing comfort and compassion in hard times. Absolutely. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> for the most part. Ooh. I got to try and remember that. The only other funny thing was when he was talking about his parents. I got to find that. Do you remember him talking about that? Not really. About how his parents was different or not even his parents. He was talking about how like back in the old days, people had kids for um, it was a luxury to have kids. Oh, yeah. Like it was a benefit. Like you yeah. needed kids to help you with the business, the farm, everybody having like 10 kids. Now having kids is a like burden. It's yeah. like you got to pay for these kids. You got to provide yeah. for these kids. You need to help. That's why he's talking about kids. how like. You just got to adopt with the times. Like, you got to keep changing with the times. Like, the advice you're getting from somebody that was raised in the 70s, 80s, you got to take it for what it is. But you got to have awareness to even be able to digest the advice. Absolutely. Hey, man. Gucci Mane got greatness. Different perspectives on it, but I liked it. Good. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> got anything else you good? I mean, I got plenty, but I'm good. I'm all potted out, man. <laughs> hey, I, got, I got stuff to do. I got life to live. My time is currency. Come on, my man. attention is worth. <laughs> hey, Gucci, we ain't got the greatness quotes coming soon. Come on, man. 
Hey, uh, we appreciate you listening. Again, this has been another ZTP Zen Trap Perspective. I am Yogi LG. Zen P, man. Always remember to protect your peace. Protect your energy, man. Zen Trap. It's the Zen Trap. We, we out. out.